Hello there, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. Happy Saturday morning, another acrylic tutorial. Uh, let's see what we got. We got three brushes today, our large brush, medium, and baby brush. We're going to be using purple, red, orange, yellow, and black and white. And we're going to be painting a really fun sunset uh, from the top down as the first part of the painting today. Then we're going to let that layer dry and come back and add our stag silhouette. So let's go ahead and start with purple on our large brush. And you're going to want to go back and forth here at the top part of your canvas, just going back and forth and getting it all filled in with purple. I find that sometimes purple is a little bit light uh, as far as opacity goes, doesn't have a lot of great coverage power. So what you can do is add just a pinch of white into it to up the opacity. Or you can really just kind of pile on the purple and really saturate that canvas uh, and get it all filled in. I'm going to saturate the top part because I want it pretty dark. And then I'm going to add just a pinch of white here uh, and make a slightly lighter purple stripe right underneath. So I'm starting at the beginning of my gradation and I'm also upping the opacity of that purple. Two steps and one there. Okay, yeah, and I do want the top fairly dark because that's going to be our night sky creeping in. Once you get that purple filled in, go ahead and rinse your brush a little bit. You can have a little bit of purple still on it and grab some red. Again, a little bit of white helps that opacity. And you're going to want to put a red stripe right underneath your purple stripe and then blend them together. So again, don't be shy here. Don't just lay two stripes next to each other. Actually bring that red color up into the purple and the purple down into the red. And now let's go ahead and rinse that brush again. And I'm gonna apply now a bright red right underneath our sort of purplish red. And again, I'm creating a stripe going back and forth with those brush strokes and then bringing the brush strokes up into the other color, blending it down from the top down. This is a really good beginner's exercise for blending and you get a beautiful little result of a fun sunset painting. So really fun way to practice blending here. So again, back and forth. Don't be shy give it a try. And then you can rinse your brush in between colors or not depending on really how much paint you use and that's kind of up to you. I do tend to rinse my brush a lot. Then go ahead and add orange is our next color. Work on our way down here. Same idea folks. We're just bringing it up to that other color blending it in there. Again, I love to add a little bit of white to a lot of my colors, even though today's sunset is pretty bold. I love me some pastel paintings too, but today we are not being shy with those bright colors. In fact, let's add a little bit of a brighter orange here too, and we're going to brighten it up with some light yellow here in a sec too, which is going to look really nice and bright. So again, right underneath and then blending them up into the other colors. Same step. So we've worked our way from purple to red to orange to yellow. So we have a four color gradation here that we created as our background step. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry for about five or ten minutes and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna work with black and white now and we're going to start with our medium sized brush. Grab some white, we're gonna create some thunderhead clouds. The way that I do these is I start with sort of half circle brush strokes that kind of work my way down 
what looks like a really puffy kind of mountain range to me, and then a straight line on the bottom. And then with a little bit less paint, I kind of scribble it in to create that puffy texture. And the paint is dry, so this is um, like a layering technique, not a wet on wet blending technique. And honestly, you can add whatever kind of clouds you like. You can add just like puffy, classic shaped clouds. You can add a couple streaky clouds, or you could add no clouds, whatever you like. But this is a way that's really easy for me that I have practiced lots of times, but give it a try. Again, those half circle curved brush strokes and then flat at the bottom. When you fill it in with this sort of scribbly texture, you do kind of want to transition the scribbly brush strokes to the straight like back and forth brush strokes by bringing some of those straight brush strokes kind of up into the main cloud part. I know that's kind of hard to explain, but just like the two layers there of the straight kind of underneath of the cloud looking through to the puffy part of the cloud is really what gives it that nice effect. You can go back and make that white a little bit more bold, but if you do overdo it, eventually it'll be solid white. You can also add some fun little stars. If you'd like, I like to do this with the back of my brush. Very cute and easy little touch. All right, go ahead and clean off that brush and we're going to do some silhouette work now with uh, that same medium brush in black. And I like to start with a horizon line. And in my imagination, this scene is a forest, maybe a clearing or field in a forest. So this is dirt ground, which is uneven. So that's just my imagination here. You can go for a straight line if you want, but I'm gonna try for flat-ish forest ground. I'm just filling that in with black. I am going to paint the sides of my canvas with black and this same brush later. Just FYI, I'm not going to show that part because just if you'd like to paint the sides black, go ahead. You can go ahead and retire your medium brush and grab your baby brush. And we're going to start creating some trees. I like to start trees by just doing a straight-ish up and down line and then kind of wiggling my way back and forth. You can either go back and forth across the whole tree or you can kind of flick your brush stroke off to one side. Whatever works for you. I usually do both so that I get a lot of different sort of tree texture. Silhouette work is pretty forgiving, so definitely give these trees a try. You can add as many as you'd like to your painting. So again, just starting with that straight line. And I don't mind that it looks kind of funky for a second. That's part of the process building up the different shapes and layers here, starting small, because you can always make it bigger, but it is much, much harder to make it smaller. You can kind of finesse your tree, slowly creating the shape that you want.
All right, and now for some trees on the other side too. A nice dense forest. So these are, I believe, redwood trees. Redwoods go upward a tiny bit, whereas pines go downward a tiny bit. I'm pretty sure if it's the other way around, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Set me straight, but I'm pretty sure I live in the beautiful Pacific Northwest where both are abundant. So I tried to look out my window and see, and I was like, well, I see both. <laughs> I don't know which one is which, but... I'm pretty sure. Sort of Christmas tree type shapes. Okay. I think I'm going to add one more baby tree after all. One little baby tree. Maybe he's a tree off in the distance too. Give it a little bit of depth. Just needed a little bit more. Still asymmetrical though. Okay, now I'm starting to eyeball out where I'm going to put my deer. I always sort of envision where I'm going to put the brush strokes before I actually apply them. And remember, you can always practice on your papered table. We're going to start with an oval. The oval's going to be floating above the horizon line. About, I'd say, an inch and a half, two inches. If you go too high, you might need to kind of have like a closer, bigger deer silhouette. Like, uh, and if you are a little bit closer to the horizon, maybe a smaller deer, that will depend. But again, starting small and then working out from there. I'm gonna add his little tail, little rump as well, going from my, they're kinda like a hot dog looking shape now. <laughs> Okay, this front part is going to be the neck. Really just gently building this one shape at a time. Okay, so this back leg shape is gonna be two little curved brush strokes that work your way down to the ground. And then thickening the top part of the leg the bottom part of the leg is a little bit thinner, a little bit straighter as well. And then the second leg is just going to be a curved brush stroke from the oval down to the horizon. And again, starting small and then making it thicker. And you can see when you step back from your painting for a second whether or not your legs need to be thicker comparatively to the rest of your deer, but also let's try to get most of the shape on here first and then we can kind of, again, finesse things. Slightly curved front leg. 
This is pretty much right underneath the neck. Thicker at the top, tapering down, and then one more leg would be coming from the background here. I'm going to have him do a sort of dainty hoof up sort of pose. Okay, not looking too bad. So far, so good. Now the head, I'm actually going to create a triangle as the base, base shape there. I do find it's easier to sort of fill it in as I go so that I can see the shape as it starts to build up before my eyes. Okay. Smoothing out the neck and then I can sort of see different areas that I want to alter slightly. I'm going to create his ears. So you want to have them come from the top two sort of corner parts of the triangle that we made before. And again, I'm going to start small just with little tiny brush strokes and I will make them larger as needed. I think his head's a little bit too big. <laughs> We're gonna go with it. Can create a larger body size to compensate if you got a little bit heavy handed with the head or legs. This is certainly the most challenging part of the painting. Now to create antlers. So first, you'll want to do two little curved brush strokes facing each other on top of his head. And then kind of like a bracket shape that goes out in either direction, branching off from that main first antler. Antlers remind me very much of tree shapes, which I think is really beautiful. I can see that <laughs> I want to change the shape a little bit of the deer's body. Don't mind me. Feel free to always add anything on your painting that you want at any time. You don't have to follow the exact steps. You can always go back and add something or alter it. Okay, finishing the antlers. I just want to have a couple little sort of sub branches that come off and there can be multiple branches or just like one main one. It depends on how old the deer is. Is stag a, a term for a male? And what's the term for a female deer? Oh wait, <laughs> it's doe. Doe a deer, a female deer. I know that one. <laughs> okay, and then again, add any other final touches that you'd like. Honestly, I recommend stepping away from your painting for a few minutes at this point and then coming back with a fresh pair of eyes and seeing what that deer needs and sort of adjusting the shape as needed. That is a very helpful trick 
try that out. You've likely been staring at it for too long and can't even tell what it looks like anymore. So definitely come back with a fresh pair of eyes. See, I can see already it's looking a little bit wonky. I'm going to thicken his front leg a little bit. But yeah, I'm going to come back. But uh, first, I'm going to add a little bit of white to my ground as well. And that's kind of the last step piece de la resistance with my baby brush as well. And just to kind of give it a little bit of a sense of it being ground, a little bit of gray, sort of watered down white, just a few brush strokes back and forth. And yeah, I'm gonna give this a second to dry and add any final touches that I'd like and I'll show you the finished product in a second. So here is the finished product. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I think I made his head a little bit too big. I did paint the edges black as well. I do prefer my original, I think. <laughs> uh, the original is for sale on auction. If you'd like to support the channel, you can bid on an original painting, get a print. I'd also love to see your original masterpieces in the art club. Hope you subscribed. Can't wait to show you guys more great tutorials. New videos posted twice per week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Okay, until next time, stay creative.